It's a question that comes up every year in the Sports Center newsroom when Davidson meets Duke. The question, mm -hmm. just where is Davidson anyway? Mm -hmm. Well, Davidson is a college in North Carolina, <laughs> and why should we stop there? Davidson's largest victory in school history? An 86-point drubbing of Warren Wilson in 1991. That's a team, not a person. Davidson's last victory over Duke? Well, that happened way back in the 81-82 season. Let's go. Davidson coach Bob McKillop trying out Duke coach K and Cameron. Good luck. Wayne Bernard. So dangerous, coach K would say later. Bernard was sensational. Bernard on fire. 21 points in the first half. Davidson beating Duke by one. Duke by six. Four minutes left in the first half. Off the break we go. Sean Dockery. He didn't play long. He played eight minutes, but he scored six points. There's two of them. Duke up eight in a close one. Remember, the Blue Devils are a young team this year. Sheldon Williams on D. Nice steal. The captain. The captain. Chris Duhon. The finish. Matching his career high with 20 points to Duhon, 10 assists. Duke up 10, second half, Duhon. Shadley Randolph, 17 points, 12 boards. Duke by 12, Davidson hanging tough. Peter Anderer, 13 points for him. Then still, down eight, it's that guy named Bernard again. Finding some space, making something of it. Davidson within six, last chance for Davidson. Trying to make something happen, but in the end, no, and Duke would hit their free throws down the stretch. They're disciplined, and they win by a 15. Number eight, Alabama and Middle Tennessee State. Low angle video of Irwin Dudley inside. 17 points in the game for Dudley. Love Mo Williams. Mo drives baseline. No help. You're in trouble. Mo the tasty kiss off the glass. He had 14. Bama also playing defense. Irwin Dudley with the... Schwepp! Reigning SEC Player of the Year, the big block, and then more Dudley inside. <laughs> you can't give him that easy money. Bama wins 80 to 65. Owen leads the way. George Washington and UConn. Jim Calhoun, 17 season as head coach at UConn, and he remembers this. March 13th, 94 G Dub against UConn. Second round of the big dance. Yinka Dory starring for the Colonials back then. Ray Allen, Danielle Marshall starring for the Huskies. Huskies beating Mike Jarvis's Colonials. Carl Hobbs, an assistant at UConn for eight seasons. This is his second as head coach for G Dub. On the break. Nana pops Mensa Pansu, slamming it home. That's a mouthful. In the end, Amika Okafor, the sophomore center, nine points in the first mm. nine minutes of the second half. And then on D, the nasty block by Okafor. Eight blocks, 13 points, 12 boards, and Calhoun's squad a winner over Hobbs. Bounce over to Maui for a little basketball. Last season, Kentucky ranked 268th in the nation in three-point accuracy. Taking on Arizona State, and early on, Keith Bogan, glad he stuck around at Kentucky, hits the three, a little more from the kid from DeMath, the high, he drains another three, he's three for four from the land of plenty, then Bogan's dishes to Antoine Barber, Barber, two of four, Kentucky keeps coming, Josh Perry, triple jump, Tubby Smith digging the scene, but he's watching the highlight, Jason Braxton controlling it, watch Braxton, will he go around in circles, that's... Little Bill Preston. That's illy, that's a freaking good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Fitch, though, running the floor. The oops upside your head to Barber. Barber had 13 points. Fitch had four assists. Kentucky wins 82 to 65. No problems in Maui for the Cats. Speaking of Maui, Mike Davis says his team shouldn't be ranked as low as they are. He's right. I agree. Make a point over UMass. Me too. Kyle Horns before assists. There's one of them to George Leach. 19 points, 16 boards, both career highs. Tom Coverdale. What a gutsy player this guy is. Check out this the staggered screen. Coverdale. Mm. To perfection, 4-10 from three-point range, 14 points in the first half. The staggered screen again. 14 points of his 20 coming in the first half for Tom Coverdale. UMass down 18, looking to run. His name, Raheem Lamb. Do that stuff. Sit. <laughs> Lamb led UMass with 17 points, 12 boards. Hoosiers, too much down the stretch. Coverdale finding... Tracy Wright for the dunk. Hoosiers win. They were 12 of 26 from three-point range. Virginia and Chaminade, Ralph Sampson in Maui, because this is the 20th anniversary of one of the biggest upsets in college basketball history, when Ralph and crew were knocked off by the Silver Sword 77-72, back when they were the number one team in the nation. Eight players and coach Merv Lopez on hand for, to, uh, for Monday's game. Second half, Chaminade down only one. They're up 45-44. Pete Gillen said this was a lose-lose situation for his team. Quote, we were set up for an execution on national TV. Relax, Pete. Your team handled its business. Travis Watson, the big flush. And then Elton Brand. Skills, the fadeaway. 
Brown, as in Elton Brown, don't confuse him with Brand, had 22 Virginia wins. Utah Gonzaga, Blake Stapp, Ronnie Turiat, for the love of elevation, 24 points. Bulldogs, Corey Violet nailing the three, he had nine points. Gonzaga in control, good ball rotation. In the end, it would be Kyle Bankhead, 10 points for him. Gonzaga beats Utah easily. With a three-point arc moving back to NBA range, a lot of teams in Maui had trouble with their outside shooting. The combined three-point percentage of the eight teams playing Monday. Madison and Georgetown, old dirty basket. There, Patrick Ewing, Georgetown alum. Big night for junior Mike Sweetney. He has 997 points, and in the first half, Sweetney, the kid out of Hobson Hill, flowing later. Sweetney again, his 12th point. He becomes the 33rd Hoya with 1,000 career points. Georgetown up 45-28. Then Gerald Riley. He was 4 of 4 from 3. Georgetown by 20. Riley had 23. Sweetney inside for the noise. He had 21 and 9 in 20 minutes. Hoyas win by 20. Indiana, Gonzaga, Maui Invitational. Ronnie Turioff, pass inside, so dangerous is Ronnie. 24 points matching his career high. 16 of those in the first half. Next trip down for Indiana, Kyle Hornsby. Enjoying the journey, 14 points for Hornsby. Less than nine minutes left in the first half. Gonzaga up four. Watch the circle. That's a circle. That's a lot of empty space. That means an easy pass to the hoop for Richard Fox. He had five points. There's oh. two of them. Gonzaga up six. Less than eight minutes left in the first half. Indiana down seven. The freshman. Brace yourself for Bracey Wright. Three of his 15. Indiana within four. Less than two minutes left in the first half. Wright. Indiana shot 44% from three-point range. Second half, Hoosiers come out firing. From where else? Three-point range. Tom Coverdale, four of eight from three-point range. Indiana up 10. But wait a minute. With Indiana up 12, Coverdale again. Indiana 24 of 53 from three-point range in two games. And then it's Blake Stepp. Stepping up with 20 points. Gonzaga within five. Coverdale at the line, 15.6 left after missing the first. Misses the second. Still a five-point game. And we're going the other way. Step. Step. Blake. Step. Likes the view. Step five and nine from three-point range. Cutting the lead to two. One last chance for Gonzaga. Winston Brooks' basket is good, but it doesn't matter. Indiana holds on to win by a single point. Step aerobics. Oh. Virginia and Kentucky. Keith Bogans in Kentucky struggled against that Virginia matchup zone defense, which was anything but Cavalier. Gerald Fitch for three. Brandon Stockton for three. Josh Carrier for three. And again. Well, why not take it to the hole? Well, Antoine Barber would do that against four Virginia players. And despite the poor shooting, Kentucky led by two at the half. But of course, Tubby Smith displeased with his team's marksmanship. Obviously, we're better in transition, but they made that adjustment with their zone and kind of slowed us down, which was a big part of it. But um, we started settling for the outside shot and not taking it inside. I thought we took the ball to the basket that last play. There was typical of what we want done. Antoine drove it all the way to the basket, forced him, and then they got him in some foul trouble, got in the, the free throws. That's the way you beat the zone is get it up there before it set it up. Kentucky shot 0 of 12 from three-point range in the first half. Second half, different half, same old story. Hogan's nothing but air. Now Kentucky's down by one, another three. They're getting one open looks, just not hitting. 222 on the night from three-point range. A few minutes later, Todd Billett drains the three for Virginia. He finished with 15 points, a game high, and a little over a minute to go off the inbounds pass. Devin Smith shoots the three and gets the bounce. Virginia's first win over Kentucky in 80 years. Texas Tech SMU highlights batteries not included. Middle of the first, SMU down six. Justin Isham finishes the fast break with a nice dunk. Texas Tech up four. Now a word from our sponsor. And the most effective over-the-counter defense for that is provided by Sargent's Pet Care Products, including flea and tick shampoo. <laughs> The conditioner. We're going to find conditioner in a minute. Andre Emmett, the one-handed jam, Texas Tech by eight. And if you order now... For you to get an advantage in electronics, make sure you see your local RCA dealer. 
Texas Tech up 14. Kasim Powell puts him up by a little more. And if you order now, operators are standing by. Patterson UTI drilling is just that, number one. Number one in America in footage drilled and wells drilled. Hey, listen, when it comes to drilling, this guy must know. The general knows about drilling. Come on. Robert Tomasek at 19 points in the game. And yes, we got to hear more about What happens to the UCLA Bruins during the months of November and December? Is it just me, or do they look like they're not all there? The last six seasons under Steve Lavin have included losses to such intimidating teams like Colorado State and Cal State Northridge in the first two months of the season. Heck, the Bruins lost their first two exhibition games this year, one of them to Branch West Basketball Academy by 25 points. Before facing Duke Saturday, the Bruins took on San Diego. How would they do? There's Steve. Three and three in season openers at UCLA. Jason Blair to Roy Morris. Hits the three. 14 for Morris. Tie game. A little over a minute left. San Diego down two. Roy Morris feeding Jason Keith. 10 of 14 from the field. Keith had 30. Time running out. Bruins chance for a win. Jason Capono. Long try. No good. Ball loose. Cedric Bozeman. Bozeman. At the buzzer, we go to overtime against San Diego. Bruins and San Diego in OT. Matt Delzell hits the three. San Diego a four. Last chance for the Bruins. Down three, under 10 to go. Dijon Thompson for three. No good. Oh, well. Wake the Bruins up in January. San Diego beats them by five. Florida A&M visiting 19th ranked Cincinnati Field. Williams, career hot 22 points. Jason Max held the post. He had nine points and nine boards, four of 15 from the field. We're still moving along. Leonard Stokes, Stokes, Cincinnati wins easily. Rattler shot just 28% from the field. I have Eastern Illinois at Marquette and a Dwayne Wade steal. And high percentage flush. Still on the first, Scott Merritt. Merritt's a little coverage with the block. Thank you. Wade, another steal, and another dunk. Marquette up 54-36 at the half. Second half, where's Wade? There he is. 28 points at his first, 11 shots. Marquette wins going away. Iowa and Drake. Drake's lost 23 straight to Iowa, but Iowa's up by one with just 15 seconds to go. And Jeff Horner forces one, and here comes Drake. Back the other way, Lonnie Randolph for the win. Lonnie Randolph for the win. No good. He's crushed. Iowa, a one-point escape from Drake. Could say Matt Doherty is thankful. Coach Roy Williams did not return to North Carolina to succeed Bill Guthridge as head coach two years ago. That left the Chapel Hill gates wide open for Doherty, who spent seven years as an assistant to Williams at Kansas. Williams, of course, was a longtime assistant at North Carolina. Their respective teams meeting in the semis of the preseason NIT. There is Coach Roy facing Doherty, the Long Islander, back at the Garden. This is being played. He's got such fabulous freshmen as Matt Doherty. There's one of them, Richard McKay. Hands, 10 of 15 from the field. One another, Jawad Williams, 6 of 12 from the field. Then McCants on D. Wow. All the way for the finish, 13 in the first half. McCants set the tone. Melvin Scott, the crossover in the pull-up J. Caroline up nine at the break. Kirk Heinrich strained back. What up? But Heinrich comes back. He's a leader on this Kansas Jayhawk team. He starts the second half. Clutch center Sean May, top of the circle, draws the defense above the foul line. May delivering to McCants, who was cutting. Carolina by 11. This is the youngest team in the nation, North Carolina Tar Heels. Heinrich loses it. Jack Emanuel ahead. Look who's away. Felton is disturbing the peace. 10 for Felton. Heels by 13. Moments later. Coach Roy concerned. Felt misses, but look who's there. May with a rebound and put back. May had eight points, 11 boards. Doherty, what about these freshmen you have? Rashad McCants said one time, I think that uh, being a freshman is just a label. You know, uh, that uh, they, they are very poised and confident and, uh, and talented. Kansas trying to rally against this very talented team. Heinrich loses it and throws it away. 20 turnovers by Kansas, the number two team in the nation falls to the Tar Heels, who are still undefeated. Over number seven, Florida. Late first half, Mario Boggan attacks his own. Blocked by Matt Harrius. Second half, more zone. Florida forces the entry pass. Adrian Moss loses the ball. Justin Davis picks it up. Brett Nelson trying to force the ball into the zone. 
Justin Davis comes up with the steal. More zone from Stanford this time. Matt Bonner, the turnover. Billy Donovan's Gators turn it over 15 times. Under two minutes to play now. Julius Barnes finds Matt Loddick who sinks the three. Stanford up by two. Under 60 seconds left. Florida down by two. Tough runner from Bonner. Ties the game at 65. He had 19. Next possession. Barnes almost turns it over. Gets it back. Where's Loddick? Where, where is he? There he is. Squish! No! Offensive rebound. Great work by Rob Little. He is 18 and 9 in the game. Under 10 seconds, 67 65. Anthony Roberson. Florida shoots just 39% from the field, and Stanford advances to the finals of the preseason NIT. Virginia, Indiana, Maui final. Tom Coverdale has got that David Caruso red hair. He was also 0 for 6 from the field. Keith Jennifer, Coverdale gets his arm up on him. Jennifer calls for the travel. Jennifer thinks he got pushed. Pete Gillen agrees. So Indiana inbounds. Watch the arrow. Jennifer will whack Coverdale with a backhand. This is in tennis. Coverdale returns the favor. Nothing cold, though. Coverdale talking with the refs, and then uh, Coach Davis says, uh, use your noggin, Tommy. Indiana up by three. Coverdale fakes the three because he wasn't hitting any. Pass to Marshall Strickland, who had 15 points. And it's a four-point play. Brace yourself. Jennifer turns it over. Bracey Wright, 21 points, 6 of 15 from the field. Indiana wins its first Maui championship on its third try. 70 to 63, the final. Another big trophy in Maui they're giving out. There's Tiger, <laughs> then the Hoosiers. All right, number 16, Kentucky, number 21, Gonzaga, Blake Stepp. Stepping up with five threes, 24 points. Zags by four. Second half, Marquise Estual makes his presence felt. Jules Tamara feeds him for the dunk. Kentucky up by five. Later second half, Kentucky up by nine. Check out the great block up from Marquise down low. Picks up the rebound. Nice outlet pass. Going to run the floor. Kentucky up by 11 as Tamara finishes. Later, second half, boy, just so strong down low. Oliver Swills, nine points in the second half, and Kentucky is a winner by eight. The hundredth college game facing Northern Arizona, which hasn't beaten Arizona since 1919. Yeah, you remember. October of 1919, the White Sox fixed the World Series, beating them the Black Sox, who Drew Wilson was the president. The 18th Amendment prohibition was enacted, outlawing alcohol. Back, mm -hmm, back to the game early in the first. Luke Walton, uh-oh. Somebody forgot to wipe up the floor. Slips. Walton, it's a grade A right ankle sprain. It will be evaluated Thursday. We'll know more then. Second half, Wildcats up 20. Hassan Adams. Oh, this is so, uh, not easy. Oh, well. 3.15 left to play in a blowout. Adams again. Doesn't miss from there. The Zagra Danny at 21, Arizona. Takes advantage of 26 turnovers. By the this time of year in college hoops. It's when the smallest schools meet their larger counterparts, and while they usually come up short, it's nice to give the Eastern Illinois, the Florida A&Ms, the Chaminades of the world some love. Another of those schools, St. Francis of Pennsylvania, facing fifth rank Pitt. There he is, Brandon Knight, preseason Big East Player of the Year in transition. The lob to Julius Page. Just like they planned it, Page with 11. Later in the first, this pit team is dangerous. Knight again, this time to Jawan Brown. Brown scored 10 points on 5 of 7 shooting from the field. More pit transition basketball. Knight avoiding the defender. Lays it in, in, in his face. He almost had a triple-double. 10 points, 9 assists, 8 boards. Pitt wins easily. The Citadel in Maryland. Terrapins going for their 86th consecutive non-conference home win. Drew Nicholas, all him in the first half. Squish. Pronation, please. Right in the middle. He had five threes in the first half. And those are, that's from Dana Barrows land. Way out there. Again, the fast break. He had as many points as the Citadel did in the first half. 17 to 17. Terps win huge. 18th ranked Georgia looking to beat Georgia Tech for the fourth straight time. Ezra Williams through the legs of Ishmael Muhammad. Then called for a charge in the lane. Take another look. Williams playing street ball with Muhammad in the playground. 18 points for Williams. Dogs up one second half. The sophomore, B.J. Elder. Turn around, Jay. And this guy had cramping in both of his legs, but he was playing hurt. He eventually left the game in the pain with the cramping. 
His coach, Paul Hewitt, would later say BJ showed a lot of courage. Came back in the game, did Elder, and he hits the biggest shot in the game. Butchie, you're paying attention. Elder, 24 points with the pain. And the Jackets snapping that three-game skid against one and two Georgia. Number 25, Illinois, home to Arkansas Pine Bluff. James Augustine, the freshman, nice dunk. Illinois up by 22 without co-preseason Big Ten Player of the Year. Brian Cook suspended for the first two games for playing an unsanctioned summer tournament. Oh, Roger Powell, the humongous dunk. Watch it again. Oh, Snikey. Game high 17, Illinois up by 31. Later second half, Brown hits one of his four three-pointers. The Illini in a route, 96 to 43. It's been an interesting week for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Monday, they were involved in this nasty incident with Memphis. This fight began late in the first half. Memphis guards Billy Richmond and Clyde Wade have already been suspended a game, and you can expect more discipline to come from this.